Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Today is uh, the 29th day of April, uh, Wednesday. And this is our morning prayer for, for today. Just to say, do, do remember to send me any prayer requests that you may have. And um, I will be sure to include, include them in our prayers as we pray together, as we, we pray and seek God's mercy and grace together. So let's begin. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Hallelujah. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. Once, at, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land, so now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. And so let's, uh, <clears throat> let's do the, uh, the psalm. The psalm this morning uh, is Psalm... Uh, Psalm 105, and um, so it's a long psalm, and then I'll read just one portion of the commentary from Tim Keller's book, Psalm 105. Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord, our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac, he confirmed it to Jacob as a decree, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. To you, I will give the land of Canaan as the portion you will inherit. When they were but few in number, few indeed and strangers in it, they wandered from nation to nation, from one kingdom to another. He allowed no one to op oppress them. For their sake he rebuked kings. Do not touch my anointed ones. Do not do my prophets no harm. He called on famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in, in irons till what he foretold came to pass, till the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of peoples set him free. He made him master of his household, ruler over all he possessed, to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel entered Egypt. For Jacob resided as a foreigner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people very fruitful. 
He made them too numerous for their foes, whose hearts he turned to hate his people, to conspire against his servants. He sent Moses, his servant, and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark. For had they not rebelled against his words, he turned their waters into blood, causing their fish to die. <coughs> their land teemed with frogs, which went up into the bedrooms of their rulers. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He turned their rain into hail with lightning throughout their land. He struck down their vines and fig trees and shattered the trees of their country. He spoke and the locusts came, grasshoppers without number. They ate up every green thing in their land, ate up the produce of their soil. Then he struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their manhood. He brought out Israel laden with silver and gold, and from among their tribes no one faltered. Egypt was glad when they left, because dread of Israel had fallen on them. He spread out a cloud as a covering and a fire to give them light at night. They asked, and he brought them quail. He fed them well with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock, and water gushed out like a river. It flowed in the desert. For he remembered his holy promise given to his servant Abraham. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the lands of the nations and they fell heir to what others had toiled for. That they might keep his precepts and observe his laws. Praise God the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, and it's a long psalm, but I, I, I want to just uh, read the first the meditation for the first part, the first six, seven verses. But Tim Keller says, tell of his wonderful acts. This psalm describes God's mighty acts of redemption in history. But before he begins that account, the psalmist calls people to worship and praise him for all his wonderful acts and miracles. Believers rightly hear this as a summons to tell others around us what God has done in our own lives. Too often we stay silent about his saving acts in our own histories. We might think that keeping quiet about such things is modesty, but its effect is the opposite. It allows others to believe that we have overcome our problems and lived our lives on our own strength. I do love that point that Tim Keller is, is making. Uh, we are to tell of God's wonderful acts because if we don't do this, it gives the impression that it's all up to us. It's all stuff that we have done. It's all because of our own strength why we have gotten to where we have gotten. So we are to always testify of God's wonderful works in our histories to remind ourselves and others that God is at work and I am not where I am today purely because of my own might and my own strength. So let's pray the prayer. <clears throat> Lord, I praise you that you have broken into my life and brought me up short and opened my eyes and ignited love in my heart for your name. Ah, uh, but you did it in such wise, brilliant and beautiful ways. Give me the humility and the courage I need to begin to testify to others about your goodness toward me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I love that. I love that point, that, that psalm. All right. Um, 
let's uh, the reading the reading for this morning is Luke we are we are, we are in Luke chapter 1 from verse 39 to 56 this is the, the magnificat and Mary's visit to Elizabeth Luke chapter 1 59 to um, 39 to 56 at that time Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zachariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant, from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed the mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their innermost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but he has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, even as, as he said to our forefathers. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. All right, Magnificat, lots of things here. Just, uh, I guess pick out one or two things my soul glorifies the lord my spirit rejoices why because god has looked with favor on this lowly servant mary and so mary exults in god mary praises god for the for for the miracle for the wonderful thing that god is doing in her in a sense this goes back to the psalm you praise god for his mighty act you praise him for his great work or miracle that he's doing in your life. Um, the lot of things he said that she says here that God has done. God has performed mighty deeds with his arm, scattered those who are proud. He brings down the, 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 the rich and he lifts up the hungry, fill the hungry and he lifts up the, the humble. I love where he said, where she said, he has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful. God doesn't forget, of course, but it's a because because God seems to take a long time to do um, what He does uh, to intervene in our lives. Sometimes it, it 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 might appear that God has forgotten us, but when we cry out to Him, He remember us in His mercy. And he comes and he helps. So remembering, God remembers to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever. God, God, has, God has chosen a people. And sometimes it looks like God has forgotten those people. God has chosen you and me to be his people. And yes, sometimes it looks like God has forgotten us. But he hasn't. And so the more we cry out to him, the more he will remember to be merciful. Let's, let's pray. <clears throat> so Father, we, we come to you this morning not because of anything in us, 
but because, Lord, we recognize your goodness to us. We are sinners in need of your grace. We are weak in need of your strength. We are destitute and we need your abundance, oh God. And so Lord, there's so many things in our hearts as we get up this morning, as we embark on this new day, we bring them all to you. I think of Deborah's friend Claire in the, in the Midlands who has been suffering from the virus and the after effects of the virus. Think of her and her family and others who, who we know and she knows. We remember this morning in, in your mercy, Lord, we, we ask that you remember her and, and those she loves. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we ask that you remember uh, Rose's family again, just to bring before you Carolyn and the children and the rest of the family, even as they mourn the passing of Clive and seek to say farewell to him. We ask, Lord, that you remember them in your mercy. We pray for those who are, uh, again, we, we ask that you remember Stella as she put things together again. In your mercy, hear our, our cry. To her, uh, give her strength as she prepares to say farewell to Molu. Uh, again, remember charity, even as the, she and the family proceed without, without their loved one. We ask that you remember the Udiazo family as they, again, Chichi and the others, as they uh, seek to plan and say farewell to Akor and his son. Lord, remember them in their hurt, in their grief. Lord, remember those who have died, all those whose names we just mentioned who have passed from this life into the next. We ask, Lord, that you will have compassion on their souls. Forgive all their sins and receive them into the blessed peace. Of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Remember those, Lord, who are still sick and suffering and are suffering from various ailments. I do want to pray for Deborah and John this morning as and the difficulties John's been having with his eyesight and among other things. Lord, you know. You know what he's going through. We pray for your help for him. Lord, you know, give him the healing he desires. Give him the, the, the appointments, the doctor's um, uh, help that he needs. Supernatural help that he needs. We pray for his own body. That you bring healing and health. To him pray for Deborah again and the pain that she's been going through we ask Lord that you'll ease that ease that pain in your mercy Lord we bring these to you and Lord we, we just bring all those that are on the prayer list in our own church so many and so many different ailments and and so, Lord, we bring them all to you and we ask for your help. We ask for your intervention in their lives. You know them. You know them by name. You know their problem. You know what they suffer from. Lord, be their help, we pray. Be there, O oh God, in the darkness 
in the sickness, in the pain, to bring comfort and healing and wholeness. Lord, that's our desire. That's our, that's our prayer. So we pray, Lord, that you'll hear us in your mercy. Lord, we keep praying for, the, for our country, for our world, against this virus that is causing so much problem, kill, deaths and sicknesses, and just the economic problems that it has caused upon our world and upon our country. Lord, we ask for your mercy. We ask that you will intervene in our situation, in your mercy, in your compassion, and put a stop, put a stop to the virus. And Lord, we pray that you will help us to have learned the lesson from this lockdown, from this pandemic, and that, Lord, we will emerge from this better people, more committed to your will, to your desires. For, Lord, we ask that you'll remove the pestilence, remove the plague from among us, restore us again, O Lord, so that we will gather again together as your people to give praise and glory to your name, to exalt the name of Jesus again together in our buildings, on us, on the streets, wherever we go. And so, Lord, we ask for you, for your intervention. We ask for your for your loving arms to remove the virus the, that is causing so much problem in our world. And so, Lord, for us today as we embark on this day, give us the grace to live for you today, to exalt in you, Lord, to praise your name. As Mary sings, my soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Lord, give us this kind of spirit today to magnify your name, whatever it is that we're going through. May we Proclaim the goodness of your name, the strength of your name, the power of your name. And give us grace to remember, like the psalmist, your good deeds, all your wonderful works in our lives. Even if we can't see it today, remind us and give us grace to praise you for those days, for those such times when you are always there with us because you promise that you will never leave us nor forsake us. And even when we walk through shadows and valleys that, that are death, you are there to comfort us, even in the darkness, even in the death, even in the shadows. And so, dear God, we thank you for your great love and mercy to us sinners. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And so let's gather all our prayers together. If you've been praying and let's, let's say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And so, a minute or so of this song.
Amen. 